back. It's got great character and great history. And it was a whopping one one hundredth of a second <laughs> that determined right. that pole. Here's the snapshot of the points thus far. So that margin's opened out from 148 to 197 in favour of Shane Van Gisberg. And now Craig Lowndes is hanging on to that third spot. He's now 34 points clear of Scotty McLaughlin. Jason Richards' trophy, however, that's looking a little more like it could drop in favour of the first Kiwi to receive that award, Shane Van Gisbergen, but it is not done yet over Mark Winterbottom. Scotty McLaughlin third, so two Kiwis in the top three for that prestigious award for the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy as the cars start up and we get set now for our next 35 lap 100k encounter. And uh, interested to watch that lap in focus of Jamie Wink up there a moment ago because again when he's on song and that car's working there's not a lot of wheel work he just is able to feed the car where he wants to he didn't have to chase it with the exception of one moment turning into the final corner and he really had to catch that car it's pretty impressive let's have a look at our starting grid now for Race number 27 of the championship and the pole position. Jamie Wincup alongside him. It's his teammate Shane Van Gisberg and they locked horns in the last event. Then it's Scotty McLaughlin in the Volvo alongside Chaz Mostert, position number four. Mark Winterbottom, race 26 winner alongside Fabian Coulthard, showing great form in the Nick Johnson Racing Team Penske car. Bathurst winner Will Davison and Scotty Pye, who was second in our last race. Craig Lowndes still yet to win a race at Pukekohe. Then it's James Moffat, Michael Caruso and Garth Panda followed by Todd Kelly and Lee Holdsworth in the Preston Hire entry, the Holden Commodore. Position number 15, James Courtney and Rick Kelly. 17, Cam Waters and David Reynolds down in 18th, and they've just not been able to get a handle on the setup of that car. Jason Bright, still a miracle they got that car out there after the damage yesterday. Then Shay Davies, Dale Wood and Chris Pippa in the wars yesterday. Nick Perkat and Tim Blanchard, 23 and 24. And the final couple of spots on the grid, Tim Slade and Andre Heingartner, cars number 14 and number 3. That's your 26-car field. Season worst qualifying, unfortunately, for Tim Slade. So it hasn't been a great weekend for them at Brad Jones Racing. They've really had some battles on their hand. They've had to do quite a bit of repair work this weekend, put them on the back foot. It certainly has been a toughie for Brad Jones Racing, but it's also been tough for Dave Reynolds. He rolled the car out, was fastest in practice one. He did a 2.73, had three tenths margin over everybody in the field when everyone rolled out on brand new tyres on Friday. And a bit of a shout out, I reckon, also to Neil for Shea Davies, who's had his career best, year best qualifying. He's actually right in behind Dave Reynolds in position 20. And sometimes the real challenge with it is maintaining the flow and the rhythm of the racetrack and tracking its changes that are required. And that's been the real art form for some of the teams. Listen to the response here. stuff between the two engineers. We've got Grant McPherson and David Couch in there. Great stuff before we go racing. I said it before, for me it's about the guys not in championship contention. Watch them to make a statement here. And because of the bloke and because of what he meant to our sport, one of the newest trophies in the game is on the line, the Jason Richards Trophy. That is a huge one. And we've got a guy sitting on second on the grid here, Shane Mangersberg, and he is vying for that one. But the battle that we saw in the last race was incredible. And afterwards, I don't think really anything's going to change. These guys will be going at it. Watch Shane Van Gisbergen. It's all about the start. Jamie Winkup will be determined to get some points back. We celebrated the intensity of the competition between Van Gisbergen and Winkup yesterday. The oh, breathtaking God, battle through down. the last sequence of corners. They locked horns in race number 26 for Winkup. It resulted in a pit lane drive through penalty. They're back on the front row of the grid now for race number 27. That's the view of the balls. It's a Volvo and a Ford Falcon, row number two. Last race of the weekend from Auckland and a great start and a brilliant conversion by Winkup. McLaughlin will probably get down the inside of his countrymen into second and he has. Then it is Van Gisberg and will try and sneak back down the inside of the curb. And he fires the Commodore in there and actually claims that second spot once again. So McLaughlin had momentum, but we've got a problem here for Reynolds. He's grabbed one of the braking signs down there. He's pulled up one of the brake markers and it's sitting on the front of the car. What a superb start by Jamie Winkup. One of the only times all weekend from the inside running, he made a gorgeous start. It had minimal wheel spin and down to the first corner with two or three car lengths on everybody. Beautiful manoeuvre also for McLaughlin with Van Gisberg and great racing room for both guys. 
Van Gisbergen prevailed over his countryman, Scott McLaughlin. Three abreast now, down into turn eight. There's always chaos down here. There's Tanda down the inside of Moffat. They have a little bump. Will Davison caught up in this also. This is pretty lively. And he just released the throttle, James Moffat. Big congestion down at the hairpin with this group at the back of the pack. And uh, look how close it is between Shay Davies and Jason Bright. That made Scafie suck a little bit of air. They were so close. Margin for Winkup, 0.6 of a second. Reports have been steering arm for David Reynolds, car number nine for Penwright and Erebus Motorsport. And in fact, it's worse than that. He comes into the lane. He's got damage in the front left corner of that car. It looked like maybe a flat tire. So the gap is tight now and tightening between Winkup and Van Gisbergen. Shane's made a little bit of ground at the northern end of the circuit on this lap. He's clawed it back to point four. He's found a couple of tents straight away. Intense rivalry between these two. It boiled over in the previous race. Then it's McLaughlin, Moston, Winterbottom, Coulthard, Pye, Lowndes. And McLaughlin covers. Here comes Tander down yeah. the inside of Davison. Squeezes by with next to no room, but he makes ground. That's up a spot into ninth for Garth Tander. Now it's Moffat on the outside of Davison, and he claims the road. So Will Davison having a bit of a battle in the early laps here on cold tyres. Reynolds has come into the lane, as you saw, and I think they've taken that car into the garage from the radio conversation. And here's Caruso nibbling now at Will Davison at turn one. That puts Will on the dirty side of the road. Got him. Now Todd Kelly's in there, and they're nudging. Kelly has to take to the gravel to get it done. His brother Rick's in here as well. Something going on with Will's car. Maybe he's got a bent steering arm or some other issue, but he's being monstered by everybody out there at the moment. Next up, Lee Holdsworth trying to grab a spot. Will covers, he moves it over. He's actually trying to get back down the inside and he's forced him off. So there we go, just gonna make sure that... Uh, so Rick Kelly saying something wrong with the right rear, could be a flat, was the radio message to his crew. Meantime, it's all going on at the hairpin again. Now it's James Courtney and Lee Holdsworth gets shoved up high on the curbing, drops onto the grass and gravel down there. Courtney might be in a bit of a bit of strife with that. We look now at the back of Andre Heimgartner in the plus fitness. He's got a lot of damage at the front and the rear. Right hand tire smoke coming out of that one. So wink up. 0.6 over Van Gisbergen for McLaughlin. Blanchard's down the inside. Watch this start. Not an ounce of wheel spin. Absolutely beautiful start. So was Lowndes down the inside of Will Davison. Lowndes has taken to the grass twice this weekend, I've seen on our replay images. Look at that. That is a ripping start. And look at the pace that McLaughlin had. I was surprised that Scotty wasn't able to hang on from there. But once they came down to turn two, Van Gisbergen had the inside running. We're riding now with Mostert. Had a couple of dips of the clutch to get it launched there. A tardy start by Van Gisbergen, but then he converts right here. Stayed with the throttle and looked like he'd given a lot of ground to McLaughlin and then was able to sneak back down the inside. And I thought Scott probably could have eased the car across to the left. It was pretty nice to Shane in that zone. And here's Dave Reynolds going off the road. There must have been contact just before that. And here's the drama we always see coming on to the back straight. They're all rubbing and bumping. That's Tim Slade with Heimgartner. That'll be steering damage. And yes, there's a right-hand rear drama for Rick Kelly with that exchange down there with Will Davison. They took the opportunity to just have a peep at that there car. And there's the damage on that tyre. Fastest lap of the race, Van Gisbergen. 0.4 of a second. There it is confirmed. He's right on him. He's in the hot, disturbed air of car number 88, Shane Van Gisbergen. But it looks like he might have a little bit more pace in a couple of places around here. They're both driving smoothly, and they've eased away by about one and a half seconds over McLaughlin, who's got Chaz Mostert right on him, who in turn has his teammate all over him, Mark Winterbottom. A couple of different lines that the guys are using there, Van Gisbergen and Winkup at the hairpin. One of them's driving down lower into the camber of the road, driving out straight at the other one, using more of a contour and taking the long road. High line, both of them coming out of there with very similar exit speed. And on that lap, a 4.03 for Winkup, a 3.99 for Van Gisbergen. Coulthard's quick as well in the third sector, fastest of the race so far. 
He's in sixth uh, position. Just about the big picture, mate. So if you're going to make a move, let's make sure it's clean. Thank you. Graham McPherson with uh, very polite radio etiquette. If you're going to make your move, make it clean. Thank you. I don't think he's quite close enough to do anything mega ambitious at the moment, but it's a stalking brief. He's right with him, and it looks like that 97 car is very accurate in this race. He complained in the previous race about the balance of the car early on. He does like that higher line through turn eight through the hairpin. Really didn't alter the margin between he and Jamie Wincup. It's a personal preference and the way he's got the car set. Right there's where we saw in that onboard lap prior to the start of the race where Wincup had the big slide in car 88. Jamie makes a little mistake off 11 there, the final corner. Just dropped the left rear. Didn't lose any margin to Shane in the process. And that's a great view. It gives you an idea of the handling and behaviour of the race leader's car. So Shane's a little bit stronger in the slower speed stuff. Jamie, if anything, might have a little bit in hand in the higher speed corners. It's the age-old trade-off at Pukekohe. That's right, you almost cut the circuit in half. One side of it's very fast and flowing. The other side, this side we're on here now, on the train line side is much more 90 degree, low speed, traction and braking oriented. And there you go, there's the battle with Mostert, his teammate, Winterbottom, and in behind, it's Fabian Coulthard. They're actually making reasonable speed, these guys. They're not too far away. In fact, they've actually just drawn up to the back of McLaughlin slightly. And uh, just heard Will Davison talking about the car being weird in those early laps. And clearly he was having a bit of a battle before things settled down for him. And uh, Phil Keed's encouraging Fabian Coulthard at the moment in position number six to just have a little fiddle with the anti-roll bars. He's really stalking Mark Winterbottom there at the moment. So a little cluster of Falcons here in positions four, five and six. They're right on top of each other in the run through turn one. So. McLaughlin doesn't look quite as convincing at the moment, does he? And so he's a bit vulnerable here to Chas Mostert. If he gets a good run out of turn four, he'll have a sniff when they get into the braking area at the end of this back straight. On board with Fabian. Just having a look now at the body language of Mark Winterbottom's Falcon. The man who won the previous race did a superb job. Won the race by 10 seconds. He's only his second win of the year and a resurgent Ford Falcon performance with Scott Pye finishing second for DJR Team Penske. The gap 0.7 between Wink Cup and Van Giesbergen. There's the line and real ground made by Garth Tander. He's up four positions. Lowndes up two. Will Davis has lost six. And Tim Slade has gained seven spots. So great run by young Tim Slade. The rear bumper and rear guard damage on Jason Wright's car. They've already had a traumatic weekend repairing the Team BOC car and there's all that bonnet damage on Tim Slade's car. So the sister vehicles out of the Brad Jones Racing Operation in the two different liveries, the Freightliner Racing and the Team BOC. Those guys are currently in 18th and 19th. Disappointing to see one of our New Zealand drivers in the garage, Andre Heingart, and your car looking fairly second-hand. What was the incident for you? Oh, I mean, it's unfortunate to be in here talking to you. I've had a no, bad, you know, at the end of the season, but it's, um, yeah, unfortunately I was keeping it clean, had no marks on the car, and then unfortunately someone spun that spun uh, Nick out, and then I was just sitting there and someone drilled me up the rear, as you can see. So, some pretty average driving going on out there, and um, it's pretty disappointing for our team. I know you're frustrated given it, it's a home round for you. You just have to sit back and enjoy the rest of this race. Yeah, exactly. Check it out. Hopefully Van Giz does all right. <laughs> thanks, Andre. Cheers, thanks. This the view from Mark Winterbottom's car through the final corner. He's 0.4 of a second behind Chaz Mostert in the super cheap auto car. And uh, these guys are hovering about three or four seconds off the Red Bull cars now. And uh, their margin is slightly growing. We cup over Van Gisbergen. It's back out to be hovering between 0.7 and 0.8 of a second. James Moffat, he's currently in 10th position. Good battle going on with Todd Kelly, who's caught Caruso. Todd's race performance has actually been quite good. It was a good, spontaneous, little bit opportunistic dive that he had there with Will Davison before coming onto the straight. But he's up right up behind Michael Caruso. Michael Caruso has done a very good job this year. He's currently eighth in the championship. And he has been, in terms of form, the lead guy. Oh, a little wheel lock for Todd. Can he get down there? Yes. Michael gives him a little bit of space. And 
And now he's got to run around the outside when they go through this next double apex left-hander. And Todd hangs on. Both cars moving around a fair bit. It's one of four drivers, Todd Kelly, that's been to every one of the championship supercar events here. He has had a win at this location. And he's just put a nice move on his teammate, Michael Caruso. So that moves him up into 11th position in the car sales entry. Back with Frosty. Still 0.4 of a second to Mostert. On the last lap, Garth Tander was the third fastest car. So Tander up into eight. So again, race pace wise for HRT, they're looking very strong. But now Mostert applying real pressure to McLaughlin. He's almost at that zone where you can almost have a little dive. Scotty's struggling. Yeah. So he's starting to get a Q form behind him at the moment. So he hasn't quite got the poise. Hasn't quite got the balance in that car in a couple of key spots. It looked like it was pretty weak in the low speed corners. Through go the Red Bulls. It's exactly one second now between Wincup and Van Gisbergen. And then this is a heck of a tight battle for the last spot on the podium between McLaughlin and the Volvo. Mostert and Winterbottom in the Ford Falcons. And just behind this green Botlo car that we're riding with is Fabian Coulthard, then Craig Lowndes. So again, slow speed corner. McLaughlin's drawn back to the front of these cars. And we'll probably see it in this next sequence of corners as well. I've just walked into Gary Rogers' Volvo and had a quick word with a, a very busy, busy Richard Holway who looks after Scotty McLaughlin. Uh, I said, is there a drama? Do you feel threatened by these guys? He said, no, mate. He said, this will come to us. Just wait. This will come to us. They were his words. Playing a slightly longer game with the balance of the car. Still 24 laps remaining. So they're hoping, Richard's hoping that these guys behind eat more of their rear tyres as the race progresses. But that's a pretty decent queue of cars behind there. So... Scotty can't afford to make any kinds of mistakes at the moment because uh, everybody all the way back to eighth, including Tander, could well have a crack at him here at the moment if there's any sidestepping. So in terms of last lap speed, Wing Cup was fastest from Van Gisberg, and Scott McLaughlin was 16th fastest. On that lap now, as you can see, that gap. Oh, a big moment there for Cam Waters at turn three to four. Very easy to run off in that zone. And there's the lap times for lap 12. Very fast still for Wink Up, almost half a second faster than everyone else that's not in a Red Bull Commodore. Perkett just made some ground on Chris Pitler. These fellas are back in 21, 2 and 3. Shea Davies in the foreground. The Loco Energy Drink, Erebus Holden Commodore. That's seen better days around the front left headlight assembly and the bonnet as well on that car. And Perkett stalking and looking for the possibility of a dive up here into turn five. Does it work? Both of them on the braking brink, and Perkat just manages to stop it. Quite a few cars out there with bits and pieces hanging off them at the moment. The race director, Tim Schenken, has just asked to review a couple of those cars out there. 1.2 seconds is the gap. Win Cup over Van Gisbergen. And there's Rick Kelly, who's been into the pits to sort out right rear tyre on that car. Unfortunately, he's down in 24th. So the only cars in the threes so far in this race are Winkup and uh, Van Gisbergen. And Dale Wood and uh, Tim Slade tangling down there at turn five. And Woody just joining back on in the gap between five and six. And uh, this is another angle of the same incident. And so Wood just takes to the grass and yesterday found himself in the wars in that particular zone on the racetrack. Look at this queue. Yeah, I was just about to say this is looming as a really good group, isn't it? <laughs> Something will happen. <laughs> so Lowndes and Tander have made speed. And again, remember that great battle we saw with Craig Lowndes and Fabian Coulthard in the previous race. But that's a very good way of explaining it. The battle pack. <laughs> it's going to be a battle pack, all right. Well, guys, uh, I don't know how much it's going to come to, but there is actually uh, a few raindrops falling in the lane at the moment. So, um, I don't know how desperate I am for it to rain at the, right now. It doesn't look like there's going to be too much, but uh, there will be a few spots appearing on the windscreens of those cars, but it's going to take a lot more before they're going to have to think about stopping. And while the tyres are up there in that 90 to 95 degree C operating temperature, that's all fine. 
And as you said, Greg, it'll take a lot of water on the road before uh, that eventually becomes a problem. But there is a point on a slick tyre where if it genuinely rains, uh, from a crossover standpoint, it will be around about the 1 minute 12, 1 minute 13 range. They'll need to get on a wet and can't act the plane off the road. Just, you, you fall off the road with almost no control. There's a point where you're unable to control the vehicle. There's the wets on standby. And uh, the race director has called a wet and declared a wet racetrack if need be. So you can come in and grab a wet at some point. There they are. And thanks to all of the volunteers supporting the cams, regular cams officials that are part of the process in supercars from Motorsport New Zealand as well. As always, we thank all of the officials in admin, all of the fire marshals and flag marshals and all of the people that go together to make these magnificent events happen every couple of weeks. 15 down. Scott McLaughlin in conversation with Richard Holway, settling him down. Krusty's seen a, a couple of fights or two in supercars over the years, so he's assured us just wait and watch. And at the moment, if anything, he might have even opened up another couple of metres, so that could have actually been a, an accurate forecast. And he's driving it very straight now. I mean, he's coming off all of the slow corners very straight. He's minimising the wheel spin. See, Scott uses that really narrow low line at the hairpin. We've been watching... Shane Van Gisbergen and, and Garth Tander using the high line at the hairpin. This is turn 10 up to turn 11. Very fast section of road. I saw the wind uh, direction from the flags on the bridge down near turn 9 there a moment ago as well. And it's definitely much more of a northeasterly now, which was forecast earlier in the day. And uh, there you go. And they were talking about there being some associated weather with that. So Murph says there's one or two drops out there. If it does ultimately open up, you've got to make a pretty big decision here as to whether you can wrestle what you've got and stay out there because touring through the pit lane at this racetrack is a long, slow process. Relative to lap time, it is a very slow process. You've got to be sure that you can recover the ground. Well, it's probably relative to lap length. It's only 63 or 64 seconds. Yeah. It's probably the longest loss in our tour. So it's 45 seconds near enough, excluding stationary time. To be three or four seconds to be able to get wheels and tyres rattled on and off. So as a proportion of lap time, be big. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. thanks for simplifying Lots. that for me. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, nothing scientific about that. <laughs> We're watching McLaughlin, who's been getting the blowtorch pressure from Chaz Austin. Gaps have just slightly opened up a little bit as everybody's found their balance, tweaked their car, settled things down. These guys have still got 1.2 seconds between them. That's been static now for the last several laps, but they've got about seven seconds over Scott McLaughlin. They've been pretty much in a league of their own, but for that last race. And uh, Mark Winterbottom and the Botlow car on screen here, the green car in the Pro Drive, did a magnificent job in race number 26 to convert beautiful performance off the line and then they grab the 75 points a really different format this weekend so we're two and a half races from the end of the virgin australia 2016 supercars championship 18 laps to go in this one and then we've got two big races to come in sydney and ben gisberger can't wrap it up so based on the 375 points remaining right now. At the end of today, there'll be 300 points remaining. Whatever happens out of today's race, it's going to go down to the wire. And there's big repercussions, huge consequences on the streets of Homebush. One little mistake changed the course of the championship. So stay tuned for our Sydney 500 event. Interesting that Wind Cup just did his personal best in Sector 1. A lot of laps into the race, the tyres have seen their best. So, uh, it tells you that he's pressing on, not relaxing at all. 1.4 seconds is the gap. There he is. Tell me, but just watching your guys battling there. Uh, Scott McLaughlin, even if he's sort of backing those boys up a little bit there for a little while, they reckon down at uh, Volvo that uh, they got something coming as the track as it wears in and the tyre life sort of goes away. Your guys working hard there, like any chat from Chaz or Frosty about being held up there? Not a word. Not a word. Not a word. The reality is I think they're also close in pace. He might be one or two tenths quicker than the bloke in front, but is that enough to get past him? Doesn't look like it. Uh, uh, 
potentially, I think the only thing that might be coming that could change things is the rain. So I think uh, we might just sneak in before it comes, but it is coming. Hey, we saw great pace from the Bottolo car before Mark Winterbottom awesome went out there uh, to lead away right from the start and pull away quite easily. Um, this time round, obviously back in the pack, all that speed in that car potentially changed a little with the weather, but yeah, as you say, very difficult to do anything about it. Yeah, I think there's no doubt he's got a faster car than he's shown at the moment, but you know. It's always hard to pass your teammate as well. You know, you're less likely to do the desperate lunge on. Uh, Sometimes. Well, in this team, we're less likely to do the desperate <laughs> lunge on a teammate. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I think his car pace is better than it's shown at the moment. But um, we'll see. You know, still a long way to go on Ty Degg. It uh, means a little bit round here. Thanks, mate. No worries. Okay, you shouldn't say that because the minute you say stuff like that, you can be sure that the opposite will apply on the racetrack. But uh, <laughs> taking a small shot at his neighbours next door, Jim Edwards, inside the garage at Pro Drive Racing. 1.6 seconds the gap, win cup over Van Gisbergen. Here's Cam Waters and Lee Holdsworth. These fellas are battling for 15th and 16th at the moment. They're 20 seconds from the lead. It's a pretty good battle, actually. There's a couple of guys who have made good ground. And Tander, who made great ground early, he's just settled in behind Lowndes now. When you get in that aero wash, you have an aero effect. Loosen downforce in the fast section of turn one and fast section of 10 and 11. And then you've just got to do a really good job in this part right now to get the run. In fact, at the moment, Tim Slade, who's up seven positions, right up in behind Dar Wood now, has made the most progress of anyone in the field, and he's got a nice run. Can he get it stopped? Can he get it stopped this time? Yes, he can. So nice move, nice execution, nice run onto the back straight to have that momentum. So that was all brewing several laps ago, and and that they've reconvened in that battle. Here we are with Todd Kelly. He's just outside the top 10 at the moment. That's James Moffat in the foreground, car number 34 in the Volvo S60. See those little sprinkles on the windscreen then as he come up over the rise. There's little bits of water on the windscreen of the Altima as he come over turn 11. And often it can be raining like that in different zones of the track. Moffat uses that high line, misses the apex, and had a little bit of oversteer coming onto the back straight. Moffat actually has had reasonable pace through the course of this. That's a bit of a rarity looking, that's slow-mo replay, so um, that's not pre-race, that's in the race <laughs> So uh, Todd's taken both hands off the wheel, look mum no hands, and a uh, bit of sweat in the brow. So work rate's up out there at the moment as he hunts down his old teammate, James Moffat. Oh, well, good save. That'll make him uh, sweat. Good so, save. Uh, now, I wonder whether that's because there's a bit of water on the road down there or it's just brake balance and tyres going away, but that was a good save. Slot the rear wheels, remembering it's like putting the handbrake on in these cars. This is a great battle, all these. And Tim Slade's gone straight ahead at turn five, and here's the replay, so big lock-up. He was clear of Dale Wood at that stage. He's been really battling there all weekend. We've seen him go straight ahead several times down at turn five, into the back straight. On board now with Lowndes, looking at the back, Fabian Coulthard, as I said in the previous race. Lowndes just harassed Fabian, lap after lap after lap, and he just terrorises the guy in front. He has the car up the inside, around the outside. He bumps, he pushes, he faints one way. He does everything he can possibly do. He's such a competitive guy. Behind that big smile, Craig Lowndes is a very aggressive race craft. And this is this intriguing battle with the Volvo. A couple of Falcons, actually three Falcons, two Commodores, and Scott Pye's making a bit of ground on Garth Tander in eighth spot. So Craig Lowndes in one of the most almost inexplicable things in his career has never won here. Probably would have won last year's race prior to the big tyre blowout on the soft tyre, but has never won a race out of all of the years at Pukka Koei. It's extreme, isn't it? Yeah, it's unusual, particularly given his success everywhere else. Now, this margin here is closing down again between Scott McLaughlin and Chaz Mostert, and Richard was just on the radio a few moments ago. They were discussing anti roll bar settings in the car, and Richard said, no, it'll make it understeer too much. So they had a cushion, and it's disappeared once again. And it gets another 
third of a length further up, half a length further up, Chas Mostert. He'll be within striking distance to try and throw it down the inside, see if he can wrestle some space away from the Volvo. Great, isn't it? Love watching the behaviour of the cars. And we said in the coverage yesterday, as the field has got more competitive and engineering prowess improves, knowledge of the cars, damping control gets better. They're looking better through that last section than they have ever. When particularly there was an image came up earlier in the day of the Paul Morris, Brad Jones rollover yeah, in that yeah, last section of the racetrack. Well, well, cars well, look well, like well, pogo well, sticks yeah. by comparison. Speaking of pogo sticks, how's the way uh, Scotty just threw that thing up on two wheels That's and then the slid it up there? So there's the reason why all that margin disappeared. So it was a little bit too hungry over the curbing at two. And the smallest little error at this place costs you big time. In fact, I think Mark Winterbottom's got better pace than most of here was clear of him. Remember, Winterbottom won the race previously by 10 seconds, drove the car beautifully. Very smooth, looked after the tyres. Tells you a lot about track position, doesn't it? That yep. if you get an opportunity to get out in front and then just calm everything down, drive the car straight. Meantime, Bright's gone straight ahead at the end of the back shoot. Big slides in evidence over the top of the hill there, getting towards the back end of the day. So people are slip sliding around out there. So Bright's gone straight ahead, just like his teammate Tim Slade did a little earlier. And oh, a little oh. moment again for Chaz Mostert. They're right on the grip edge at the moment, these guys. They're fully grip limited on the mate. run into two go. four. He has got good pace, but it does underscore the fact that if you can't be in the right spot on the track and you're stuck in the traffic, you're in the hot air, having another car in front of you makes it hard to pick the perfect line, the perfect braking marker. Something's going to unfold here. <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing. Meanwhile, Moffat's actually had good pace again. He was the fourth fastest on the last lap. Tim Slade was the third fastest on the last lap. So a couple of guys that are grinding their way through the field. Moffat currently down in 10th. Slade in 17th. Slade gained eight positions in the race so far. McLaughlin's just chasing that higher line through the hairpin at turn eight like Van Gisbergen's been doing. And on that topic of Shane Van Gisbergen, uh, He's folded his cards. It's out to four seconds yeah. now between Wind Cup and Van Gisbergen. So this is really the focus now. This last spot on the podium, McLaughlin, Mostert and Winterbottom. And again, it's just evidence of when Chaz turns that car in at turn four, he turns and catches. So as it starts to shift the load to the left and the outside of the car, it just rotates and over rotates slightly and slides a bit in the rear. That has a delaying effect of getting on the throttle, coming onto the back straight. It's making him a little bit vulnerable to his teammate. Right on him now, Mark Winterbottom. He might have a think here about firing it down the inside at turn eight. This is when Tim Edwards' words need to be very carefully right. applied. Yes, our blokes don't do that. <laughs> Except if they get half a chance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, here's his battle. Todd Kelly and Moffat, teammates from last year. And look at this this massive gap now for Jamie Winkup. He's driven the car so smoothly. And the Jason Richards trophy is the thing at the moment that's in Shane Van Gisbergen's mind. With 277 points, plays 245. And as you said a second ago, let's put the white flag up a little bit, that it will be great for Shane Van Gisbergen to be the first New Zealander to win the coveted Jason Richards Memorial. Garth Tander is just having a bit of a search around the back of Craig Lowndes here at the moment as well. In position number eight, the Holden Racing Team, Commodore, has been searching for a bit of fresh air to try and keep uh, engine and brake temperatures under control in that car. This is the view from the rear bumper of the Team Vortex car of Craig Lowndes. Listen to Lowndes off the hairpin. Second gear for Craig, so not using first. Garth was having a battle to get through the hairpin there. He lost quite, quite a bit of ground. He was up high at understeer. You could see the steering angle of the front tyres looked awkward. The car looked a little bit clumsy in that part of the racetrack. Six laps to go, Craig. And he's been doing that for a while. That's the new radio voice, John McGregor. Big news this week that Ludo Lacroix, long-term Triple Eight head engineer, been with Roland Dane for 17 years, moving to DJR Team Penske 
next season. And John McGregor, the young Irish guy, is on the radio there. Scotty loves the air over turn two curves. He loves the bicycle act over there. It's right up high. As much curb as he uses at two, he stays right off the exit curb at four. And it looks to me like he's getting slightly better drive off there. In fact, that's given him a gain on that lap. So coming onto the back straight, McLaughlin's got a car that looks like it's dealing with that part of the racetrack a bit better than the others. Now, if anything, it's Mostert that's a bit vulnerable, who through the year, despite having an astonishing run chasing down armour or poles, hasn't converted to a win from those poles, but he has had five third placings. But it's actually been rear tyre life that's been his challenge, and it looks like he might be starting to have a battle on his hands with the back of that super cheap auto racing car at the moment. He goes five seconds to car behind. It was a boot that hits him to me. Great work. It's David Couchy on the phone to Jamie Winkup. How's the two-wheel action there that you just spoke of? Right up on two wheels. Shane Van Gisberg has been calling it the bicycle effect, but he does stay off the exit curb nicely. And he gets it turned, meaning when you've got the trajectory of the car and you've got it off the corner with minimal lock, he always makes sure that the exit is better. And look at that beautiful shot of the bump at turn one. I'll be studying these images in debrief midweek next week. Inside of that car for Chaz was completely off the deck. Fabian had a lock up here, and now he's got Craig Lowndes all over him and Garth Tander. Garth goes down the inside. Fabian's in the awkward spot on the outside. And here we go. Bumper cam action. Fabian right in behind Lowndes. And Tander tucked in behind them. So Fabian made it reasonably easy for Lowndes then with a little mistake. And then Craig with a nice diving manoeuvre at turn eight. And I think he looks vulnerable now to Garth Tander. Remember the drama we saw at the Gold Coast with Fabian and Garth? Not a lot of love lost there. Here, here we go. Here's the rear wheels locking. Front, actually, right front. Battles to make the corner, runs wide. Now the crisscross. So, Lowndes capitalises. We're on board now with Lowndes. Down the inside. Now, check where Tander places the car. He ends up slightly low, and then this bump, which actually helps sometimes on the exit. What you do is you just roll out of the throttle a little bit. The guy from behind will bump you, and it pretty much is a little, a little bump. It gives you a bit of momentum, propels you forward. And as long as it doesn't make the car slide, you get a little yield from that. And there you go. There's Tanda, who's been able to make that move stick down at turn eight. And Fabian has lost a couple of spots. Back to eighth now. So Winkup, Ben Gisberg, and McLaughlin, Mostert, oh. Winterbottom. That was a big slide. Wow. <laughs> so Garth just made some margin. Gave a little bit of it back over the top of the hill. Meantime, back in the pack here, Blanchard and Percat are at it. And uh, Nick decides it's better to tuck in behind the cool drive entry into the last corner sequence. 6.1 seconds is the gap. Wind cup over Van Gisbergen. McLaughlin's 11 seconds behind Van Gisbergen now, and he's just opened the margin ever so slightly over Chaz Mostert out to 8 tenths of a second. There's really nothing across that next group. Everybody's waiting for somebody to make a mistake, including Nick Perkat here with Tim Blanchard and Rick Kelly trying to get some ground back after having stopped to deal with that damaged tyre. These fellas are down in 20 and 21st position at the moment. Here's the replay of how Garth got the job done with Fabian. And Fabian gave him tons of space and they did that cleanly, both, I'm sure, acutely aware of the trauma they went through a couple of weeks ago on the Gold Coast. And Scott Pye's now made a lot of ground on his teammate. Huge amount of ground. You can see the gap there. Two Falcons. We cut almost seven seconds in front of the field. And as Neil said before, Shane Van Gisberg now being conservative, just making sure that he doesn't make a mistake. Sometimes when you go a bit slower, it's easy to make a mistake. You just, you've got to actually keep reasonably pressing on. You don't want to be 10 tenths, but you don't want to be eight and a half tenths either. It's easy to overrun a brake marker, lock a wheel, use too much curb, lock the rear wheels into turn eight. Any of those little mistakes will put you off the road. As you see this battle, it's been an intriguing battle with McLaughlin, Mostert, Winterbottom. Previously, it was Coulthard in behind there. It was three Falcons, line of stern. Lowndes has been able to make that move stick. So is Tander. And they've been able to sneak by Fabian Coulthard. 
Big slide there for Garth Tander, turn 10. Well, one of the big questions of the weekend, I can bravely say now, to to it's been answered. It won't rain today. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, See, I waited until there was only about uh, a minute or two of racing left before I could make that bold prediction. It's not going to rain in this race. I knew it all along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had no idea. <laughs> Here we go. Wind Cup's got a massive margin now. It's out to seven and a half seconds. He's also got the fastest lap of the race as he rounds up Shay Davies at car number four. The Loco Energy Drink car. There's the gap back to Shay. And you can see that angry pack also coming into turn five, all battling for third spot, which this stage is still all about. Scotty McLaughlin gives you an idea of the gaps to your favourite drivers. Then Most, it's just lost, lost touch ever so slightly. Winterbottom, Flounds, Tander, then Fabian, followed by his teammate Scotty Pye. Final lap now for Jamie Wincup. Well in control in this one. It's been a big weekend for the Red Bull cars particularly in that last race where they managed to occupy the same bit of real estate and controversially lap, crashing into each other. Three poles for Shane Van Gisberg and one pole for this man on screen for Jamie Wincup. A win to Jamie, a win to Shane and a win to Mark Winterbottom in response in that last one. So winding through the complex at five, six and seven for the last time. Got tons of space back to Shane Van Gisbergen to just relax and enjoy the fruits of this one. The car looks beautiful. He's been able to get it tuned to perfection. It's ridden the bumps. The wheel work has been minimal. He's into the final complex. It's redemption after the mistake in the last race. And he puts together a beautiful second Hello. win of the Hello. weekend. Well done, Jamie Wincup. Win number six, 2016, career win 103. Yeah, well done, that was really nice, well done. Uh, mate, you're allowed to smoke these tyres, we don't need to bring them back to Australia. Uh, do it on the front straight, please. <laughs> and David Couchy says you can smoke them. And Shane Van Gisbergen will be the winner of the Jason Richards Memorial Trophy. This young man on screen, the fast Kiwi, Scotty McLaughlin, will come home on the podium in third position. So, two Kiwis, in the top three, but Win Cup prevails today. And a superb drive again by this man, six time champion. And he made such a great start. There was a very emphatic victory given that no one else really has done a good job from pole position on the starting order and the way he got off the line with minimal wheel spin and got down to the first corner was. A great way to set up that victory. Yeah, how was that start? Just instant conversion. They're hard to do. Yep. And uh, teams torture and torture and torture trying to come up with the right combination of revs and clutch position and how much brake is used against that. Here we go. We're about to see these tyres off into the distance as they blaze away in smoke. Jamie at his finest. He's plucked a gear. <laughs> She's a, it's his second gear rotation. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd loving it on the hill. And New Zealand loves its motorsport. And what a great way to finish off the weekend with Jamie Winkup after the contact with Van Gisbergen in the previous race and all the controversy. It's destroyed those rear tyres. They won't be going back to Australia for sure. Just supercars officials saying, right out, that'll be enough. <laughs> Thumbs up. Great job, and as you said, Neil, 103 victories for this man. Beautiful start, great battle with Van Gisbergen for the course of the weekend. Early laps, and you see Shane doesn't know where the car is, so he's going very gently down to the stop area. <laughs> as to where, where's my teammate in that cloud? He, he's giving, giving him a, a bump. Nudge. Yeah. He's giving him a bump. Well, it's a return of serve yeah. based on what happened in the last race. <laughs> So, we have just gone past our commentary box and he's got the rear on fire. And down to the Virgin Australia victory lane for him. And an impressive drive to get home by 8.7 seconds in the end. Big margin, great speed, fastest lap of the race, second win of the weekend. And recovers from the difficulties in that previous one. And a great drive by Scott McLaughlin to hang on. That was a really good 
solid performance. And Wink Up celebrates with a grandstand full at Pukekohe Park. And for Mostert and Winterbottom to put that pressure on McLaughlin the whole way, great job for the young New Zealander to hang in for a podium position. He looks pretty fresh, doesn't he? And pretty happy with his afternoon's work. He wasn't thrilled with what happened, put his hand up after that last race in number race number 26, and there is his teammate Shane Van Gisbergen. Well done, Jamie. Jamie Winkup back in the Virgin Australia victory lane and right on cue, here comes the rain. Congratulations, win number 103 for you. Yeah, yeah, right. big congrats to Shane. Uh, I'm winning the JR Trophy, most consistent over the weekend, but um, tried to make amends for the mistake in the uh, in the previous race. So, got a good start. I thought you put the mocker on me, actually, talking about the start, but it launched well, and um, that was the end of that. No, I definitely think it was me that, you know, gave you the good advice oh, at the start. You. Thanks for the luck. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Enjoy the podium celebration. Shane Van Gisbergen, a dominant force this weekend on the podium for every race, and, of course, those pole positions. A crowd favourite and the winner of the Jason Richards Trophy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty special to win that trophy. I'm pretty stoked, but... Um, Thanks everyone out here, this, the support's been awesome and to get the JR Trophy, you know, everyone loved him, he's such an awesome guy and to finally win that as a Kiwi, I'm, I'm over the moon, so thank you. I can tell you